in this video, I'll show you how to add virtual buttons in AR using Vuforia inside of Unity. So what we'll start out with again is the basic setup. So I'll delete my main camera and I'll be adding a Vuforia camera. So this basic setup, I've done this a couple of times in other videos, so please go back and watch those. The setup is the same thing for everything with the AR camera and the image target tracker. So now everything is set up with the image target and the AR camera. So what I want to do here is I want to add a cube that we can then start an animation on if we hit that virtual button. Start out by selecting the image target, right clicking it and choosing 3D object cube. Let's rescale and place this cube fairly quickly. So now what I want here is I want this cube to rotate like a basic animation as soon as I would cover this screen here because this should then be my button. So let's create the animation for this specific cube here. So go to window, choose animation. So because this cube doesn't have any animator uh, yet or an animation clip, we have to click create. It'll prompt us to save. So we'll just save it as cube underscore animation. We'll need this name for later. We'll add a property. We'll go to transform. We'll choose rotation. We'll get two keyframes. So at the end here, the final keyframe, I will hit the record button and I will then go up to my rotation around the Y axis and I rotated 359 degrees. Right after this, I can turn off my uh, record button and now it will rotate. So this one has this speed up uh, ramping effect because it has a Bessier curve. You can always go into the curves and look so you can see it has this curve effect. So in the dope sheet here where we can see the individual keyframes, if you right click a keyframe, you have the ability to change the tangents down here. So these are basically how it should curve. In this case, I'll just choose both tangents and go linear. I'll also do this for the final keyframe. So both tangents linear. So as you can see now in the curves here, they are straight. So what this means is it'll basically keep the same speed throughout this entire uh, animation. So I'll close the animation tab again. And now what we need to add is we need to add a virtual button. So this is a bit hidden. You need to select the image target. Then you'll have to go over into the inspector where you have the image target behavior. You need to unfold the advanced options and here you'll get a, a button saying add virtual button. So as soon as, as soon as you click this, it'll add a virtual button game object here. And as soon as you click it, it'll become visible. So now we'll place this over the screen that we have here. So I'll just zoom in a bit and place it. And you can of course rescale and reshape it so it fits the purpose of your specific button area. So one thing that's a good idea is to look at your Buforia target manager and figure out which areas are actually um, best to track. So as soon as we open the target here and we click show features, we can see these tracking points here. And I can see there are a few uh, tracking points on this screen here. So it, it should work fairly nice as a like trackable button surface. So I'll hide the features again. I'll go back into Unity. So at playtime, you won't be able to see this button because this virtual button preview material is just that. It's a preview material, so we can't really see it. So what I like to do is I actually like to add some uh, objects to the virtual button to actually make it visible. First of all, let's just change the name of it so it's not called virtual button. So rename, I'll call it lazy button. I'll copy this and also insert it over here in the virtual button behavior script under the name. While we're here, we can set the sensitivity to high, which means that we're now sure that it'll activate even maybe if a shadow hits it. This is a bit up to your uh, target behavior and, and your tracking marker. Medium tends to work well. It also depends on the camera quality and it also depends on the lighting situations in the room and everything. Going with high, we're sure that we can actually see an effect when we cover this button. So right click the button and choose 3D object, choose plane. Of course, rescale the plane so it fits the, the size of the button. What I want to do is I want to add a material to this button or rather to this plane under the button here so that we can actually see through that material. So what we can do is we can right click over here in our project field. We can choose create and choose material. So this new material is now our button material. So BTN mat. I want to make this not an opaque material, but I want it to be a faded material. I want to select another color than white. So I'll go and choose like a greenish, so neon green color here. And then I'll go to the alpha channel and I'll add a tinted uh, faded effect to this uh, material. Now we can take the button material and drag it onto the plane, which will make it see through. So as another little tweak, you can also add some text to it. So if you right click the lazy button here again, and you go to the 3D object and 3D text, we will get a huge 3D text here that we can also place onto the button. So I will rotate it and put it in place as well. Now we can change the text here to I'm a button and we can then move it into place. 
So right now it's below the plane. So if you lift it up just a bit. So now with all the assets set up, what we need to do is we need to add a script to our image target. So click the image target, click add component. So here you'll add a script for your virtual button. So we'll call it um, virtual button anim because it needs to start an animation. Hit enter and choose C sharp as your language and create an ad. So now if you double click it, it should open Visual Studio where we can now see our script. First of all, we need to be using Vuforia. So this will import the entire library of Vuforia. Adding to the mono behavior, we also need the I virtual button event handler. This one gives me an error mark right now because it's an interface. It needs to apply two specific functions within our uh, setup down here. So these two methods need to be added before it'll actually accept this I virtual button event handler. Let's start by setting up two variables to hold some of our information here. So we'll set up a public game object. We'll call it VB button object. We'll set up another public animator. This is the animator of the cube. So we'll call it Ubani. So now we need to make sure that it actually finds the correct uh, object. So what we'll do here is we will say VB button object is now equal to game object dot find. In this case, we wanted to find lazy BTN. So next up, what we want to find is the actual button uh, event on the uh, lazy button itself. So what we can do here is we can say again, VB BTN object dot get component. And the component we want to get is the the virtual button behavior. So this is a method and we wanted to register the event handler for this specific object or this specific script game object. Then we also want to set up the specific uh, animator. So we'll say cubeany dot get the specific component and it's the animator we want. So now we can set up our two methods to actually check if the button has been pressed or if the button has been released. So we'll set up a public void and it's called on button pressed and it wants the virtual button behavior for the virtual button. And here we can tell it what to do when the button has been pressed. Here we'll say cubeany.play because we want it to play a specific animation. And the animation we want it to play, we called it cube underscore animation. We'll have to check this in a second to make sure that our naming is correct. Then we also want just for the sake of it to have an output to our console. So we'll say debug.log and in here we'll just say btn. The next method that we need is on button released. So one for releasing the button. So again, public void on button released. Again, it's the virtual button behavior for the VB that we want to be working with here. And in here, we basically wanted to do more or less the same thing. So we'll set up an animation called none in a second. So we can just take these two lines here and copy them. And instead of button pressed, it's button released. And instead of the cube animation, we will set up an animation called none. Make sure to check your spelling. So let's save this file and let's go back into Unity. So inside of Unity here, we will now get the script updated, hopefully without any compilers. Now we can take our virtual button object, which is this button here, we can drag it onto the VB button object. Now we can also set the cube animation for the cube here and drag it onto the cube animator. So it finds the animator of the cube. So now let's select the cube and go into its animator. So you can open the animator through window and then go to animator. I have it open here. So right now the default uh, animation that it would play is the cube animation. We don't really want that. We want it to go to none as its default. So what we can do is we can right click. We can choose create state and empty. Select this state and over in the inspector, we can rename it to none. Now we can right click it and we can choose it as the set default state, which means that as soon as we play back, it'll go to the none, which has no anim animation and it'll play that back. As soon as it registers that we have pressed the button, it should go to the cube animation and play that back. When we then release the button, it should go back to none. So let's try this out. So with the tracking marker and the camera, we can click play. So in the camera feed preview, you can now see the tracking and everything seems to stick very well. So if I cover up the button, you can see that it basically starts the animation of the cube as soon as I remove my hand again. And this is the basic setup of a virtual button. Of course, you can then have it trigger anything that you want within the script. Right now, we just triggered a specific animation. And if we open the, uh, the console, we can also see that it actually did register that the button was released and the button was pressed. Again, check your spelling. So that's the basic setup of a virtual button. Thank you for watching.